Just say, as a Southern Baptist that wow. grew up reading the Bible, maybe a backslidden Baptist, but I still know the Bible. Jesus never once talked about abortion. Never once. And it was happening back in ancient times. It was happening during his time. Never once mentioned it. For people perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ down to one issue, it's heresy. Go, if you don't believe me, if that makes you angry, why don't you do something you haven't done in a long time? Open the Bible, open the New Testament, read the red letters, you won't see it there. And yet there are people who are using Jesus as a shield to make 10-year-old rape girls go through a living and breathing hell here on earth. They've also conveniently overlooked the parts of the New Testament where Jesus talks about taking care of the needy, taking care of those who are helpless, who live a hopeless life because they believe these state legislators believe that life begins at fertilization and ends at childbirth. And Caddy, what a powerful message yesterday from a son. So what Joe Scarborough has done is exactly what every professing Christian who seeks their own will above the Lord's will will do. They create an excuse that excludes the sin they love. And they support the defense by using the excuse that the sin in question's definitive name is not in the Bible. Homosexuals will say that God is okay with homosexuality because the word homosexual is not in the Bible. Abortion advocates will do the same thing by saying the word abortion is not in the Bible, or that Jesus never said any, anything about abortion specifically. It's an extremely wicked thing to do because Jesus did talk about these things, just not in the specific way that they would like. So how did the Lord talk about these things? In regards to homosexuality, we are told to flee from sexual immorality, 1 Corinthians 6. The word of God is God's word. So it all matters and it all applies, even if God did not say it directly. The Lord did not say it directly. Now, in regards to abortion, we are commanded not to murder. It's the sixth commandment. And abortion is murder because life begins at conception. So what you see here in Joe Scarborough is a sinner that does not possess truth because he loves his sin. It wouldn't matter. okay? It literally wouldn't matter if you sat down with this man and opened the word of God to explain biblically how he is wrong. It wouldn't matter because he loves his sin and hates the creator. And because of that, he will continue to pervert the gospel for unrighteousness sake. Twenty years ago, you published the book Abortion, A Rational Look at an Emotional Issue. And we're here to talk about the re-release of that book with Reformation Trust. Uh, 20 years after the fact. And I'd like us to start by asking you about that title. It's a rather lengthy title, almost Puritan-esque uh, <laughs> in its length. Tell me about your thought process uh, in titling that book. Well, when I, I, I did choose the title myself, uh, I wanted to acknowledge up front that so much of the debate about the question of abortion is generated by heat rather than light, by more emotions than by uh, intelligent discourse. And also, I was trying to uh, <clears throat> give the idea that, that this book was not going to be simply a religious diatribe, okay. but rather that the uh, discussion and the arguments that would be set forth would come not only from the Bible, but also from natural law and from the, uh, the court of reason itself. And so that was kind of what was in, in my mind for choosing that title. In the book, uh, I mentioned uh, somewhat uh, naively my conviction 20 years ago that if we could persuade people that this was a human life that we were taking, that the debate would be over and it would be a very short time until uh, Roe v. Wade would be repealed. And to, to my utter astonishment, that has not been the case. More and more and more people clearly agree. Yes, this is a human being. It's an unborn human being, but it's an unwanted unborn mm -hmm. human being. And they have no problems with continuing the process, even though they are ready to admit that what they're doing is destroying the life of an unborn human person, living human person. 
You know, I, in, uh, over the last 20 years, uh, we've seen at some level uh, an ebb and a flow in the pro-life movement from the evangelical church. When you look back over those 20 years, do you see or do you sense any sort of strategic uh, errors that the pro-life movement has made? Uh, and you know, do you have any wisdom uh, that you'd like to see uh, the evangelical church maybe take a different tack? I think the biggest uh, uh, strategic error that they've made, A, is their silence. Right. But when those who have stood up and protested they have focused their attention on abortion clinics and the practitioners who are doing the abortion by picketing and protesting in front of these uh, abortion clinics. That may have some value, but I, that wouldn't be my way of doing it. What I would do is that I would find the names of every pastor in America who favors abortion on demand, every denomination that takes a stand in that favor. Mm -hmm. And I would be picketing up and down in front of those churches every Sunday morning saying this church supports abortion on demand. Right. Because I think for the main reason that the, the, so many of the liberal Protestant churches have capitulated to abortion on demand is out of political expediency. And when they discover that it's not so expedient politically that they're made to look uh, for what they are, I think that would have more impact to get the church uh, where it ought to be because the, the Planned Parenthood clearly had the, uh, the strategy, and it's, a, it's not something we're guessing, they've stated it, that they anticipated where the, uh, where the uh, opposition would come and the opposition they knew would come from the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. okay? So they said, how can we neutralize that? I said, well, we'll get the liberal Protestant church to be on our side. And so you divide and conquer. Right. And that's the oldest strategy in the world. And so what we have to do is that we have to call attention to the uh, involvement and the capitulation of the liberal Protestant church in this uh, really Holocaust. I, mean, I really can't imagine society sinking uh, much lower than that or say, and it just uh, it amazes me that, it, that it's tolerated, but it is tolerated, and it's tolerated every day. People have lost the capacity to blush over this issue. This is, this is not just evil. This is a monstrous evil. And I've, I've been a theologian. I've spent my whole life studying theology and teaching theology. And I can tell you, if I know anything at all about God, I know that God hates abortion, and I know that he will not tolerate this forever.